I'm Marvin Logan and I'm a beekeeper hobbyist. different things for the smoke. Um, I used to use burlap but I ran out of that so I'm just using some wood chips. Um, the reason you uh, you need this is that, um, and I'm not exactly sure why I've heard different conflicting things, but the smoke, um, it drives the hives, tip, or the, drives the bees typically back in the hive. Um, it also, I've heard that it kind of calms them a little bit. So, uh, um, we want to we want to have a we want to have a good we want to have some smoke this thing going and produce some smoke I just have newspaper just to get it going and then I've got um, I've got some wood chips And then this little bellows here kind of it puts air into the chamber. There it goes. And the other thing I always bring with me is this is a little tool to separate the compartments in the hive. And then I don't always use this, but I'm going to bring this along just in case we need this. It. It's called a bee brush, and it uh, so we can use it to kind of gently brush the bees off. Get it up here. So how many times have you been stung? Maybe five. Not too, too not too often. So this is actually what's in this is what's in the hive. This is these are empty ones. These, this have not I, these are like I just bought these so uh, we'll use some of these to replace the ones that I take out so that they have something to continue building comb and, and stuff if they need it. But uh, for right now, I'm just going to take an empty tote and I'm going to use that to put the, uh, the um, uh, frames into. That kind of drive oh, yeah. them back in the hive a little bit. Somebody told me that they make them think I think that their hive is on fire. I don't know if this is true or not, but they go in and gorge themselves with honey to uh, to um, protect some of the honey before the fire takes it. I guess that's the idea. I don't know if it's true or not, but um, they definitely. Uh, calms them down. I'll cap honey on there. So this is good to go. They haven't they haven't fully capped this, but I'm gonna take this frame anyway because I want to get all this honey out of out of here. So um, this is kind of the hard part. It's getting the get bees off bees off of this thing. Look if you look kind of on this lid you'll see all this yellow stuff. That's called propolis. And the bees make it out of uh, like sap from I think trees, and they use it uh, to seal up all the components of the hive. So um, that's why everything, all these pieces, kind of stick together because they get the bees put propolis uh, on them, and it it uh, it's like their caulk that they use to seal up their house for the winter and and just to kind of make it one big cohesive unit. Um, propolis in, on itself, um, you'll see it. People will actually sell it because it's got um, it's got some healing properties. I think it's kind of a like a natural it's got some natural properties that make it good for the body and for other. I don't know how what their uses, but it's, uh, so so this is actually pretty heavy. Uh, you'd be surprised how heavy it is because it's it's just full of honey. 
Oh, they're flying now. Yeah, they, this is the part they're not crazy about. I mean, I typically, when I've done this before, and just every time I get into the hive, I don't like to spend a lot of time, you know, so I'm, I'm probably more interested in just getting this done and getting getting it, um, getting back the hive back together again. Just keep them out of there. Pull this. It just they also put it up between all these frames so it you gotta kinda pop the pop it with the tool. But this, you know, by uh, putting a little smoke on here, I probably should have been doing that as I went along. Kind of drive them back into the hive a little deeper. Less bees to brush off. So you see that, that grate that's in there? Yeah. That's called a, a queen excluder. And the reason that's there is that the queen cannot, she's bigger than the other bees. She's the biggest bee in there. And um, she can't pass through that grate. And the reason why I do that is that um, I don't want her coming up here to where the honey that we're gonna harvest is and, um, and lay eggs. So she's excluded from the from the honey supers, which is what these little smaller boxes are. You'll notice that there's a difference in the size. Um, there's a difference in between the size of the boxes. This is called a, a, a medium deep box. Um, it's a little less than seven inches deep. And um, it's really used because these, these frames get so heavy with the honey that you wanna you want they're just easier to they're easier for the beekeeper to, to manage weight wise. Um, Were you scared the first time you did this? Oh yeah. But I try to be, you know, I'm trying to be as gentle as I can. Obviously they don't they probably don't like this, I would guess. Um, but I found, you know, as long as I'm, as long as I'm trying to be not too abrupt and just, uh, and trying to be not too, you know, don't, don't lollygog around, just get it done. It's pretty easy. So there's different ways to start a hive or to start, start a, you know, collecting bees. Um, one of them, you know, the, the, the most, the cheapest way and the one that is kind of the is kind of reserved for people who really know what they're doing is by catching a swarm. So a lot of people will do that. You know, they just they'll. Um, now this is not quite this is not capped yet, but this side is. I'm going to go ahead and take this frame. Uh, but anyway, so you can catch a swarm. Um, Another way is uh, to just um, buy a package of bees um, and they literally ship you a package of bees and a queen uh, in the mail um, and then you've got to, you know, they, they basically, you put them into a, into a hive. I bought what's called a nucleus or a nuke and um, that, um, that's basically an already established an already established um, hive and it has um, a queen and it's got about 15,000 bees somewhere in that neighborhood the ones I buy anyway so I, I guess I'm sure that they've probably more than doubled by now put some more empty frames in here
you'll notice that the frames have got these little uh, these little ears on the end, and that basically creates what's called B space. Um, that is is the right size so a bee can get in there and travel between the two. And then you gotta make sure that it's there's enough space on the ends here for the bees to get around. Okay that I have that's not even close to being full on top of this and try not to squish any bees in the process. And I'm going to put my, my top board here again. I'm going to try to do this without uh, smashing any bees. Not always easy to do. I kind of nudge them away a little bit. And then slowly kind of bring it down. Oh, watch out. There's one right here. There's one right here. Get out of there. Okay. Same thing. Trying to kill anybody in the process. To make honey, they get much more protective of their hives. Now the other thing is, this time of the day, you know, we're here, you know, it's a, it's a little afternoon. A lot of the bees are um, out, are out foraging. So this is the, the best time of the day to do this. So you can see here, this is that little these are stuck together because the propolis that they make. Yeah. Again. Yeah, so there's really not much on these yet. And they typically, they'll build out from, um, I thought that they had more of these top, this top super on both of them filled, but they don't. Um, they usually go from the middle to the side. So there's plenty of room here for them to still fill up stuff with, with honey. So I'm probably going to leave this one alone too and just go with the one underneath it. They're building comb on this. Um, so I'm going to leave this one to them also. We'll see. I may end up having to do another honey harvest before it's all oops, before it's all said and done this year. But maybe not. I'll just check it and see how they're doing. But this one I can tell is pretty full. One thing you have to be careful or at least be aware of when you open up a hive like this, especially since I've got three hives right next to each other. Bees um, are not necessarily honorable, honorable creatures in the sense that they will, they will uh, rob from each other. So if I've got an open hive, if I leave it open too long, uh, it's possible that I'll get bees from the other colonies coming in and trying to rob their honey. So I don't want to keep, like I wouldn't want to keep this open kind of indefinitely they could have a problem then I'll have bee battles going on and bees will end up killing each other and over the honey this one they had the comb kind of grew together I, when I pulled it apart I pulled part of the comb off it's on the other side so you can kind of see the this was capped all the way, but you could see kind of how the honey kind of got uncapped when I pulled the frame apart.
see what color the honey's gonna be on this, this time around. So I think last time, when we did this last time, the, the honey was pretty light in color. And I'm, I'm guessing a lot of it was from clover. But I know that we've got these wildflowers that are pretty close to the to the hive here. I'm kind of wondering how much. This comb that you see down here is called burr comb. So I, actually it, it's probably good that I would have scraped that off by now, but I haven't been in this hive for a couple weeks. So why do you scrape that off? Just because it's like extra, you know, it's harder to work with. So there's also honey in the um, in the box that's below the the um, queen excluder. The, the metal grate that's down there, there's honey down there too. That's definitely their honey. So even though you know they, the the queen could theoretically uh, breed in that in that second box, that top, the, the one right below the excluder, um, and they and she probably has um, majority of that is probably honey and and pollen. But they they also eat pollen too. It's kind of their protein. The honey is their carbohydrate, and the the pollen is their uh, is their uh, protein and what's in those bottom two boxes should be enough for the for them for the winter um, for a first first year colony probably the answer is yes but I probably will not I, I, I don't know if I'm gonna take any more honey from them this year it's I probably will check and see how they're doing with that with this box that I'll put back on the one that was on top of this and um, if they fill it up fairly fast then I will I will probably do it again. If they don't, um, then I'll, I'll just that let them just coat it. I'll just leave it for them. Um, I will also when when the well, they call it the summer dearth, which is when the the um, flowers stop making nectar or there's not not as much nectar flow going on. Uh, I will feed the bees again. Uh, with sugar water, I'll put it in their hive, and they'll they'll eat sugar water, and they they'll eat that through the whole fall, and um, they'll they'll you they'll take that sugar water and they'll make honey also out of it, but it's not honey that we would really want. It's called it's just sugar water honey, and it's not it's not nearly as uh, good. Uh, it's it's basically you know syrup, uh, sugar sugar water syrup. And we don't, we wouldn't want that. But they, they'll ha they're perfectly happy with it. So the, if, you know, if there's not enough honey in, in the lower chamber there, they'll make that sugar water honey for themselves as well. Okay. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and put this other. But these are plastic foundations on these frames. It's that yellow part's called the foundation, and. Um, some people use wax. I like to use plastic because I tried wax before, but I've had a really hard time ex uh, extracting the the uh, the honey out of the, the wax foundation and not destroying the foundation. So this this you know I can reuse these every year without any problem. Um, but I always take when I'm putting empty frames like this back in. I these things are are uh, covered. I've covered them with you can kind of see it there um, honey honey wax that I saved from from other times I've done this um, to kind of uh, give them the idea of what they're supposed to do kind of draw them up into these boxes And try not to squish anybody so the bees can get out of here as well and there's a little notch so they can get out in the very bottom and then get out at the very top so I'm gonna clean up here take some of this stuff and then we'll go uh, 
Extract the honey. 